Hello and welcome to the Green Walls Lecture. So Green Wall um, basically can be considered a vertical garden, um, but it's any type of vegetated wall or surfaces, um, but they're usually divided into two areas, a green facade and living walls. And so you can see here some examples. So this would be gre um, grapevines that are used to shade a patio area up and down um, this area, so both on top and um, down the sides. So you can often use vines. Um, this is a cable facade um, in Switzerland. So you can see again, it's vines growing up the cable. And again, this is a type of green wall or green facade. Um, and then here you see a living wall installation. So these can actually be indoors or outdoors and are often more module, um, modular systems. So again, here's an example of a, a green facade. So again, um, this is actually used where they have a, um, a system growing up here and you can actually see this is actually a more modular system. Um, here again is um, green facades. They often use um, climbing plants um, that actually grow up at the sides. So they can actually grow directly to the wall or they can actually have a wire that's, or some sort of trellis system that's off the wall and they'll grow around that system. Um, so again, it can be anchored to the wall or a freestanding structure or fence or column in front of the wall. Um, now, self-clinging plants like English ivy are often used to create green walls, um, but you need to be careful, especially with English ivy, is because they can damage depending on the type of wall that you're using. Some walls, they work fine. Some walls, for example, with brick, as they go up that wall, they can actually damage some of the, um, of the areas around the brick and mortar. So it really depends on um, what type of surface you're doing, whether you would need a trellis system in front of it or let them attach directly to the wall. So what type of sur wall surface do you have, structure surface? Again, depending on how much coverage you want, it may take three to five years before it's really established on the wall. And so you need to um, be careful on that. Again, with green facades, usually you have these attached at the base of the structure. So you're gonna have actually the plant planted at the base. If you think about the green facade that's in front of the animal science building, they're actually planted there at the base of the structure and then it goes up the trellis system. While in a living wall, it's a modular system. So it's not, they're planted as you go up in the mods, not all of them being at the base of the system. So again, this is a modular um, trellis system. So again, what they have is they have these different trellis systems. Again, it's planted in the ground. And then you can basically add the trellises as you go down. Um, so here we have a, a close up of them building this trellis system. Um, and again, here's a, a system um, already built. You can also use um, cable or wire rope net systems. So this would be example of, of here you have a net system and then you could grow the, um, the whatever the grapes or the ivy or whatever you might be using that goes around um, this trellis system. And here is a wire um, system here. Um, and again, they're, they're used to grow faster climbing plants and they have quite dense foliage that can have, but again, that by having only this attached to the wall, it protects the surface of the wall. And so again, when you're designing this, you need to think about how far away from the wall you would want it. Um, again, if it's too far away, then you might reduce some of the, um, of the impacts of the green wall, which does have a cooling effect, not as much as a green roof does, but there is that kind of cooling effect. Um, but you also don't want to, especially if it's an aggressive ivy that might damage the structure of the wall, you don't want to be close enough to where it can um, get onto the wall and climb up the wall if you want it to climb up of the, um, the outside structure. Um, you can also have these vegetated matted walls. And so this is a unique form where it's basically a layer of fabric with little pockets. And inside those pockets is kind of this growing media and the plants grow. So you put this vegetated um, fabric basically down the side of the building with these pockets. And then the plants basically grow up into these little pockets and you get this kind of vegetated green wall. Um, and what that can do is it actually helps support the, um, it, just like the green roof, and actually that fabric can help um, uh, maintain the, the life of that, of the wall, of the system that you're having. 
And then again, you would, um, you would be able to use the irrigation system to, um, to get nutrients to those systems. So instead of, again, with a, with a facade, you're often going to be planting and irrigating the base of the system and the, the plants are going to grow up versus in a living mat system or this um, vegetative wall system, you're actually, because the plants are located, the roots are located throughout the, the top of the wall, you're gonna need to bring water and nutrients to that um, system so you have an irrigation system. This is again a living wall. Um, so we actually have one now in, 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 the, in the union as well as in the library. And so again, these are panels or blankets or something that are fixed to the structure. So again, kind of like those vegetative mats that we just saw outside, this is an inside one. Um, so it can be doing a variety of, of um, plants. Again, because you're individually putting them in mats, it doesn't have to just be a climbing ivy structure like it would be for a green facade. It can be any type of plant, any ornamental, anything you want in there. Um, but you do need to provide the water and the nutrients um, that were typically more intensive than a green facade, which you're just going to maintain the roots of the plant in the soil system um, or in whatever um, structure you have holding the plants for the ivy. Um, but again, you can have interior or um, exterior designs. So this is an example of an interior design. So in this design, we have, um, you can see these modular systems. And so we have um, a standard modular system here before planting. And then basically they put the plants in here. And again, they're gonna have an irrigation system that goes through. Here's again, a modular system here that you can stack in. Um, uh, it's planted before. Here's a um, example of a, of a green wall, again, an indoor wall where they basically have an irrigation system. They have the wall here and then they have again, these vegetative mats with these pockets and then they basically rotate this through. And so this is um, examples from, from one company of these um, green, these bio walls. So again, looking at green facades and living wall designs, you wanna think about attachment to whether it's the interior wall or the building envelope. Is it gonna to attach directly? Is it gonna be modular? If you're doing an interior wall, um, you need to think about the, um, the load of what you're putting on there and how it's going to stay on there. Um, if a trellis system will be used, you need to think about who's going to install it to make sure the trellises are installed to the outside of your building correctly, or if it's the inside of your wall, making sure your wall can support that. Um, if it's when you're looking at structure load on an outside wall, you're going to be thinking about, you know, the plants, the snow, the media, wind. Um, if you're looking at an inside wall, then again, you're going to be thinking more about light or even a living wall inside or outside the light, the load of the water, the irrigation system, and then um, the media that you're going to be using. Um, again, you need appropriate plant selection. Again, if it's outside, you're going to think about wind and light exposure, shading the geographic re re um, region. And again, think about the spacing that you're going to, if you're planting them on the ground or in a planter box that they're going up, thinking about how much you want them spaced based on how thick you want your wall to be. You also need to think about transplanting. That's again, whether it's in a facade where you're planting at the base or whether you're doing it in this vegetative math and a living wall, um, you need to take care with transplanting the plant into um, the, where it's going to stay. Um, you need to think about microclimate variations, whether it's on the wall, the top of the wall may have a different microclimate than the bottom of the wall. Um, you need to think about shading from other buildings based on different times of the year. And then you need to think about light. So again, indoor light, is there enough light? Or if it's outdoor, um, again, you're often gonna use south facing surfaces where you're going to get more daylight and actually more sun. So having that wall there to protect the sun exposure will help with um, reducing the energy needs of the building. Again, realistic expectations for plant growth, especially for facades. They can come um, three to five years to become fully established at the wall. And then again, plant maintenance, soil and irrigation system, whether that's a facade and you're just looking at maintaining the roots in the ground um, or in a planter box, or if it's a um, indoor living system where you need an actual irrigation system, a pump, and need to keep that going. And so what I'm going to show you now is we're going to talk about, in class, we'll talk about an an irrigation system that actually has a little pump in it and they're actually growing vegetables outside a brewery. Um, and that's on the outside wall, but again, it's a, a system. So we'll see that uh, in class. 
But today, what I want you to do before leaving this presentation is we're going to watch um, about an indoor living wall. And this is like a do it yourself where she goes back to a wall that she built a few years ago and talks about how she upgrades it and how she went about the process of doing this indoor green wall. So we'll watch this and then the presentation will be over. Hey guys, it's Summer Rain from Homestead, Brooklyn. And today's Plant Went On Me episode is about my green wall. So you may have seen that I did a video way back when, about four years ago, about the construction of this actual green wall, which was put in by a company called Mingo Design. But there's a lot that we've learned over the last four years, and I'll show you some of the improvements that we've actually done on this wall. So today, I'm gonna to show you how this is put together, how the irrigation works, and what plants do the best. So one of the things that I had to consider in building the wall is how big I actually wanted this. And initially I wanted the whole wall to be covered with green, but uh, some of the folks that I was building it with said, you know, some of these plants are going to eventually hang down. So why don't we just start with uh, a few different gutters and then you could add them as you go. But one of the things we had to consider is that each of these gutters is, is pretty heavy because if you're thinking about the soil, then you have the plant and then you have all that water in there, which each gutter holds about one and a half to about two gallons of water. If you've ever actually hiked with gallons of water in your hand, you know how, how heavy it is. So in my case, I have drywall here, which you know wouldn't be a very good way to reinforce these gutters onto the wall. So instead, we, we looked into dens glass, but we eventually just figured out that plywood would probably be the best. And you know the studs were about every 16 inches, so we reinforced the plywood on the studs and then put some L brackets, some really heavy duty L brackets in order to be able to hold these gutters which have been basically reinforced at the end so they're, they're waterproof. Additionally, one of the other things that I didn't have initially with the wall but I had wanted to do was to have some more augmented light. And I do get some really great south facing window, but with all these plants, they're going to obviously stretch and bind towards the light and shade out other plants. So instead, we installed an LED grow light up top. Let's talk about the irrigation system now. Now these are nothing more than five inch gutters and there's water in these gutters. And the way that the plants sit into these gutters are through these felted pockets, which you'll see here. So this is a soil-based system. You can see the soil. And what's nice about felt is that it actually can lap up some of the water. But of course, if you had these sitting directly in water, it could invite root rot. So what we have on the inside here is a semi-permeable membrane which you could see here. And the water never goes past this point because you'll notice this felt strip also along that goes into the bottom. And what that does is it pulls up water through capillary action. And then the felted plant pot sits right on top of that, just like this, and could soak up the water without soaking up too much, which again, could invite root rot. So you're probably wondering how I water all of this. And the reality is, I don't. <laughs> so each of these actually have about two gallons of water, which is an insane amount if you're just taking a watering can. So I wanted to create something that was semi-automatic. And this, the, the way that we remediated this was to actually take a hose and pipe it all the way from the bedroom into the living room, into the kitchen, and attach it to the kitchen sink, where there's an on-off tap for the water. So I simply turn it on, the water then automatically comes through here. And remember, it doesn't go past that sub-irrigation, the top of the sub-irrigation. So there's an overflow system that then takes the water down to the next gutter, then to the next gutter, and so on and so forth. And then once all the water is coming through and I see that the water is filling up because we have little water gauges on the side, that overflow system goes down to the bottom over there, and then I go and shut the water off. So let's talk about the most important part of a vertical garden, the plants, of course. And so for the last four years, there's been some particular varieties that work really well with and without the light. So I would say that those are philodendron, pothos, 
aglionema, some tenanthes, some calatheas, demiococca, zamiofolia, which are the ZZ plants, dracaenas. These all thrive very well within the green wall. But also what I love about the felted pockets is that you can move them around and switch plants out from time to time. So this is my first time that I'm actually going to be trying maidenhair fern within the vertical garden. And of course, if I start to see a brown around the edges or look a little wilty, then I'll realize, okay, maybe this is not the plant for the vertical garden. But what's great about it is that you can have those, that ability in order to be able to test what is perfect for your vertical garden or your green wall. Hopefully that was helpful. And of course, if you like this channel, click the like button below and you can tune in every week to plant one on me. And of course, so that's the end of our lecture. So thank you very much for um, listening and we will discuss more green walls um, in class.